Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 268 or 78 of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. I'm your host, Lewis Spears. Uh, I lied last week. This is the final episode before braces. We thought we could sneak one in. I get braces tomorrow, so we're recording this uh, on Tuesday. If you're uh, you're listening on Tuesday, if you're a Patreon supporter, Sunday if you're if you're not. Um, and uh, I well, when you're listening to this, I will have had braces, but this is the not this is the last episode without braces, so you know enjoy enjoy this because I'll be lisping soon. Um, Keelan was late, uh, so uh, he's been banned permanently from the show. Facts. Yeah, and uh, and we've we've replaced him with Rosie for good. Hello. Uh, <laughs> um, I wanted to talk about the the Amber Heard Johnny Depp trial um, because I've been watching keenly along with this. Have you have you been watching this much, Rosie? Yeah, I enjoy the TikToks with like the Wii, the Wii music. Yeah, and yeah. that's <laughs> and that's what uh, our legal system uh, and the state of the world is now is whether or not I believe you hit a woman is based on the TikTok I watch with Wii music. You know, like <laughs> yeah. that's that's really going to sway me. I'm not. You know, oh wow, you guys are going to deliberate for months in court with lawyers and witness statements. I don't give a fuck. All right. Put it, put a funny clip over some wee bowling music, and I'll decide whether or not you hit women. <laughs> That's how it works now. You know, he very well could have done it. Maybe she's lying. Maybe she's not. But the point is, I believe that she's a monster because I've been watching funny TikToks. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. And maybe, maybe that's all that all that matters. Maybe even if he loses this defamation case. I think he's won in the public's eye, and yeah, maybe definitely. that's just because he's in, he's employed a bunch of Gen Z freaks with ADHD and Ritalin to make some really good TikToks to make him look like a king. You know, like like there could be there could be hours of footage of him like jumping up and down in court, going, "I hit her, and I'll do it again." But because when I'm not seeing that on TikTok with funny music and memes attached, I'll, I'll never see it. So, you know, I I, I believe him. Um, no, I have been watching a lot of clips uh, of this, and uh, it's not looking good for Amber. And it, that's that's bad because we haven't even really seen his side of the story yet. You know, all we've mm. seen is Amber Heard's team try to prove that they're telling the truth, and it looks yeah. really false. So it's I can't imagine how it's going to look for her when they're finished defending her <laughs> and it mm. and it's like Johnny's team's turn to kind of go out there and go okay well we've had we've had uh, we've seen your side of the argument here's ours mm. uh it's not it's not looking good what what have you seen on TikTok I've seen the one where the makeup companies come out and they've said that the concealer didn't exist in the time she said that she was using it. That's right. So she said she, you know, she was covering bruises with a particular type of makeup and then the companies yeah. come out and gone. We didn't make it until uh, 2017. Yeah. And she said she was using it 2015, 2016. Right. So that's pretty damning. I mean, unless she she's forgotten, she could have been concussed. Uh, she's said the wrong brand, um, but you know a lot of a lot of other stuff has come out. Like um, you know, uh, she's pooed on his bed. What? You didn't know about that one? No, they, I didn't see they've, that. They've they've brought up uh, there's photos of, of human shit in his bed. <gasps> no. <laughs> yeah. So uh, human shit in his bed, uh, all of his friends, I mean, they are his friends, but all of his friends are saying it's not true and she was actually the aggressor and she was the abuser and Johnny was the victim. Mm. Um, and, uh, you know, there's a lot of photos of him with bruises. Yeah. There's there's one photo of her with a bruise, but it mysteriously disappears the next day. So maybe it was makeup. Um, mm. there's, there's a lot of evidence pointing towards her actually being a terrible person. But one thing that I've noticed uh, watching this trial is, you know, that when they're talking about her hitting him and, and uh, her being a liar and her gaslighting him and, uh, you know, uh, saying horrible things to him when he's withdraw- going through withdrawals or struggling with drugs or inebriated and hitting him and shitting on his bed and just really being an abusive person. When I watch this footage uh, unfold in court, I just um, I can't help but think how fucking beautiful she is. 
when she sits there in court and and just listens to the untold horrors she's she's wrought on Johnny Depp, she looks so beautiful. She's the most <laughs> beautiful woman I've ever seen. Sitting there in court, you know, pretending to be sad, ruining another man's life and shitting on his bed and bed, but she looks good doing it. Mm, that she is very I, pretty. I, I I watch this footage. You know, I listen to the stories and I go, how could you stay with this crazy woman? And then I see her in court wearing makeup and her hair done nice and I go, I get it. She's gorgeous. <laughs> and and I and I can see myself sitting in the in this in the witness stand as Johnny Depp going, you know what, this is she ruined my life, but she looked great while she did it. <laughs> you know? And and I'm kind of thinking, is it when I see when I see footage of her in court looking as beautiful as she does, I think, is it that bad to have poo in your bed? I mean, you've got maids, you can do shit, you can do the washing. Like, is she really that bad? Like, what has she done? What else is, what, what else, is she truly that evil? How could a woman so beautiful be that bad? Uh, well, she was arrested in 2009 for hitting her ex-girlfriend. Right. Her but, current girlfriend at the time. Yes, but have you seen her in the in the suit in Aquaman, in the green suit? Have you seen oh. how she looks in the she looks gorgeous in yeah, the suit? Yeah, and she has red hair as and well. And she has red hair. Yeah, she's very pretty. She's she's beautiful. So, I'll give her a pass. Uh, with that, I mean, like, is she is is she really that bad of a person? Like, I'm not really seeing enough evidence. You know, see, this is the thing. This is uh, hot girl privilege. You can get away with a lot. And there's hot oh, man yeah. privilege, but there's no privilege like hot white girl privilege. You can you can do a lot, you know? Like, yeah. you can get someone else fired for Car- Pirates of the Caribbean because you punched him, you know? And, 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 and people are like, oh, well, get, you know, he acts drunk in the movie, so he must be crazy in real life too. So get him out of here. <laughs> Oh, I, she when she was arrested, she tried to say that the cop that arrested her was homophobic. And what does the cop look like? I don't even know if there's... Nowhere a- near as beautiful as Amber Heard, I believe her. And this is what <laughs> it all comes down to, guys. It all comes down to... This is the court of public opinion, you know? I'm, I'm either going to believe the, the TikTok with the best Wii Sports music or whoever is hotter. And that's how the court of public opinion... How could she do such a thing? She has nice titties. How could she be a horrible person? Look at her in her makeup. Yes, she was lying about the makeup that she was wearing, but she looked beautiful when she was wearing whatever she was. So how could she be a horrible person? And that's... And people go... And you... You know, I might be annoying a few people with this take, but I'll say something. Johnny Depp stayed with her for a long time, didn't he? So he agrees with me. It's the final straw now. I, I've only seen my first straw. And, and it's how beautiful she looks in her little power suit in court pretending to cry. You know? <laughs> um, when she met Johnny Depp, Amber and her lawyers had the criminal record erased of domestic abuse. What do you mean? You can just erase your criminal record? Yeah. Asked the police to erase her history of domestic abuse when she first met Johnny Depp. You know what she did? She showed up and the cops were like, wow, well, <laughs> look course, at her. She couldn't be a horrible person. She's beautiful. <laughs> and she, this is what I'm saying. The police got rid of her fucking domestic abuser criminal record because she's gorgeous. Don't get angry at me. This is how the world works. Uh, you'll also see on... Her criminal record, Mm -hmm. she's been driving with a suspended licence from 2003 that was later dismissed. (laughs) (laughs) Because she's gorgeous. This is the the type of shit that an 11 out of 10 can do. They can drive on an expired licence for fucking, what, 17 years? 19 years. She's been driving with no licence. Right? Because she's beautiful. If I drove with no license for two weeks, I'd be in prison. Dude, if I drove with a license when I have my braces, they'd lock me up for leaving the house. They go, what are you doing out of the house, ugly? With your gap tooth. You're drooling. Get in prison. This Um, is hot girl shit. Yeah, and Amber's previous assistant, Kate James, testified that Amber emotionally, mentally and verbally abused her and used her 
for her four-year-old son as a prop so she seemed more maternal to Johnny and the media. She's just jealous. That she's jealous because Amber's Amber's more beautiful. This is this is what I'm saying. As an in, as look, I'm not a hot person yet, but in 18 months I will be, and I'm really trying to put myself on the side of Team Hot. And this is us us hotties, you know, I, as a future hottie. Uh, all these uh, all these uglies, they try and ruin your life because they're jealous, and that's what this whole court case is about. Is they're looking at you know uh, my fellow hottie Amber Heard sitting there in a in a little power suit with her hair done. She's her hair's done in braids, but it's also up. So how could she hurt someone if she looks that cute? You know, like how could she? I saw her. Somewhat, I saw I saw testimony of one of her assistants come into the courtroom and say when she asked for a raise, Amber Heard spit in her face. Do you know how much money I would give Amber Heard for her to spit in my face? I would have said, thank you, ma'am. May I have another? <laughs> <laughs> and that... And look, you can get upset, but it's undeniable this is how the world works. She's been driving with no license since 2003. That's real hot girl shit. What else has she done? Has she is there anything in there about her like starting an orphanage? Or or saving or saving children or or rescuing animals or or maybe stopping a house fire? Surely someone with who's so beautiful uh, has done so, amazing things like that. Uh, surprisingly, no. Right. Um, Confusing. Seems, seems a bit her, strange because you look at her and you go, that's a saint. <laughs> her previous assistant, Kate, uh, mm -hmm. stated in court that while working for her, she told Amber about a horrible event in her life where she'd been mm -hmm. uh, raped and then mm -hmm. Amber then stole Kate's experience to use for her own advantage. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> what? This woman, this woman is so beautiful. She's gorgeous. Put her on. She should be on, on the runway. I'll make no. I will make no comment about her personality. But when you see her in that green suit, all of the all of these tweets I'm reading seem to just fade away and, and just disappear in my mind. Because this this is this is why she can be an Aquaman too. Because because someone could be like, hey, yeah, I told you about the worst thing that ever happened to me, and then you pretended that it happened to you in an interview, and she can go, yeah, but don't I look good with red hair? You know, like how good do I look with red hair holding a trident? That's really that's really sexy, but also quite beautiful, and I, I would say like kind of classy, even though she's in a skin tight suit. So I don't know what all of these people are complaining about. You know, I'd, like, would, would you want to see Johnny Depp wearing a green skin-tight suit? He wore mascara. He looked kind of hot. But, you know, he's a bit old for that now. So, also, do, do we really need another Pirates of the Caribbean film? That's the one thing that's really shitting me about this whole, whole experience is, yes, Johnny Depp appears to be a victim. And, yes, Amber Heard is the most beautiful woman I've ever seen. But do we really need another Pirates of the Caribbean film? Didn't they make five? Yeah. That's enough. Well, I don't need a sixth. I'm sure that Johnny Depp would be very unhappy that he lost out, lost out on $22 million. Yes, that sucks for Johnny. It doesn't really suck for us, you know? Like all these people are pretending that they would have been excited about the next Pirates of the Caribbean film. I stopped watching after the third one. Yeah, Sam. They don't need another one. They don't. They don't need. They didn't need a fourth one. There was three. There was a guy with a tentacle beard. What the fuck is the fifth one even about? Look it up. I have no idea. What's the? F <laughs> what is Once the? Once they got rid of like Orlando Bloom and Kira Knightley as well, I didn't really want to. Watch. That's right. They don't. Kira Knightley's not even in it. Why would I watch it if Kira Knightley's not going to be there in a corset? What's what's in it for me? No Orlando Bloom sword fights. Boring. I get to watch Jack Sparrow stumble around pretending he's not a comic relief character. What's the what's the synopsis of Pirates of the Caribbean five? To break the curse of Flying Dutchman, Captain Jack Sparrow and Henry Turner embark on a mission to find the Trident of Poseidon. They also try to stop Captain 
Salzar, who intends to rule the seas. Right. All I got was that from that was Henry Turner, I assume, is... Yeah, who's Henry uh, Turner? Is that um, Elizabeth and... Oh, what's Orlando Bloom's character called? Will. 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 The oh, son? Will Turner. Yeah. Yeah, okay, so it must be his father or his son or something. Yeah, actually, I think Keira Knightley is in that one. You know what, though? But How Orlando about this? What's the plot synopsis for Aquaman 2? Here's a good answer. Who gives a fuck? Check out Amber Heard in the suit, you know? What's the what's the plot for, for Aquaman 2? And let's see which is the better film. Which one deserves a sequel, you know? I'm really, I'm rooting for Aquaman 3. I reckon Queen Mira gets her own film and it's just her like swimming in the ocean for two hours. I would watch that. Uh, Aquaman forges an uneasy alliance with an unlikely ally to save Atlantis and the rest of the planet. Captain Jack Sparrow come, comes down into Atlantis and they take down Queen Mira together. An unlikely ally. I bet it's Captain Jack Sparrow. When you look at Aquaman 2, also there's all pictures of her. Not exactly. Aquaman. And, and Aquaman is undeniably one of the hottest characters that DC has. Jason Momoa is one of the best looking guys in the world. And when you Google Aquaman 2, the movie that he stars in, the only thing you see is Amber Heard in the suit. So I'm, I'm sorry if I would be okay with a little bit of shit in my bed. I have a washing machine. <laughs> I, I think it's really funny that uh, Johnny Depp's been taken away from Captain Jack, mm. but there actually is a petition to remove her. She hasn't been officially removed. It is fucking, on a serious note, it's fucking insane that uh, her accusations can ruin his life with no no conclusion in court. They might be true. It, that's mm. that's a that's a reality that we still live in. It could be true, but but him, you know, s- being so confident that he, that she's lying that he's suing her, and she still gets her film. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm not saying that both of them should have their lives ruined. I'm saying there should be like a like a a little bit of benefit of the doubt for both of them. And yeah. be like, all right, well, let's yeah. let's see. Who's really telling the truth in court? And then we'll figure out. I mean, look, I'll take it back because I'm actually very happy that there's not going to be a six Pirates of the Caribbean film. But I'd like to watch Johnny Depp in other things. You know, I'd like to watch him in a film where he doesn't have to wear mascara and stumble around pretending that he's drunk or or actually being so, if you believe Amber. Um, Which I do. Have you seen her in a suit? Uh, (laughs) Look. All I'm saying is even if you even if you watch the witness testimonies, no one can tell no one can finish a sentence without describing how beautiful Amber Heard is. Fucking Johnny Depp's friend told this whole story about him walking in on what was clearly her like beating the shit out of Johnny. And and he got Johnny out of the situation and still called her beautiful. <laughs> Which, you know. I can't really see myself doing for a lot of a lot of my friends, you know? Like I think it's a little bit strange to call your friends girlfriends beautiful in front of your friends at all, right? But it, mm-hmm. but if I was also doing that after they'd like thrown a fry pan at their head and they were bleeding from the eyebrow, I'm I like I feel like for most people you would get your friend out of that situation. You wouldn't be like, "Oh, by the way, you look you looked beautiful when you threw the when you threw the, the boiling oil over my friend, you looked great doing it. You know? Look, guys, I, I don't know. I'm, it will be interesting to see what happens. Because, mm. you know what, before this defamation case, uh, everyone was on Amber's side. Or it was at least, I reckon it was mostly people on Amber's side. She had that, like, uh, very vehemently uh, proactive, like, fan base on Twitter. Or it could have all been Russian bots, who knows. Um, but I'm not seeing any of that anymore. It's all like anti Amber, mm, yeah. um, which I guess all of those tweets must be written by blind people. Um, <laughs> but I, I think I hope Johnny gets his career back. Oh, I hope yeah. he's a really good actor. Yeah, yeah. 
You can tell if you pay attention to the trial. Um, <laughs> look, I'm just, I'm just trying. I'm just, please message me, Amber. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know if he gets it back though. I think that this whole like fog over you lasts a long time. Even if you, even if he wins, I feel like people are just gonna. Come, well, company Disney doesn't touch him ever again. Mm. No way. Yeah. They, 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 they're like, oh, look, we'll employ children. To make our toys, but we're not going to work with someone controversial, all right? <laughs> so, yeah, it's like, look, the only people who are allowed to who are allowed to have a problematic past is us, all right? Please don't watch any of our cartoons before 1960. <laughs> but come to Disneyland, we will charge you fifty dollars for a plastic cup. Um, mm. yeah. So, look. Good on, good on them. I hope, I hope it works out. I hope that, uh, I hope he wins. It looks like he will, though. Like, the whoever the fuck she hired as her legal team is has done a very poor job. Oh yeah, that clip of him being like hearsay, and then they're like, "You ask the question." Yeah, like they're <laughs> they're object they're objecting. They ask a witness a question. The witness answers the question. And then they go objection. And the judge is like, what the fuck are you doing? You asked him the question and he's answering it. So <laughs> yeah. I've seen that TikTok of like the judge like in slow motion just like shaking her head like, oh, is this a joke? Yes. <laughs> and like that it's... with the Wii music is so funny. <laughs> <laughs> fuck. Dude, the world's fucked. If you can't pay you can't pay attention to anything with that like funny music anymore. You know, shit used to be like, oh, I could hold people's attention for ten minutes in a YouTube video as long as I zoomed in every now and then. Now I gotta cut that fucking now you have to cut down like a like a sixty day tr- a trial, eight hours a day, every day down into like seven seconds with silly music from a game you used to play for anyone to give a fuck about it at all. See, that's Ukraine's problem. Not enough not enough TikToks with funny music in them, you know? Nurses did that really well. We all gave a fuck about nurses because they knew how to dance. Have you seen a Ukrainian soldier dance recently? Mm. No. That's why no one cares, you know? The... I knew that Ukraine was over the minute people started complaining more about petrol than they did, like, the loss of civilians. Like, that's that's really when it started to get bad and when people were like, oh, poor Ukraine, and then people were like, $2.20 a litre? That's annoying. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, I think uh, – I, I hope I, – it seems like he'll win because it seems like his, his team is, like, incompetent. What I was saying was – um. At the start of the trial, if you watch Johnny, he's like freaking out and he looks really sad and like mm-hmm. he, lo- he looks like, man, why did it get to this? Um, and I don't know if it's it, it, it's one of two reasons. Now he looks happy, like he's laughing every day. Yeah. He seems really happy. He's like joking. Uh, he seems to be enjoying Amber's lawyers fucking up a lot. Mm-hmm. Um so that like change must be like he, he, him and his lawyers are like, oh yeah, this is a slam dunk for us. These guys don't know what they're doing, um, or he just looked over the the other side of the courtroom and saw Amber Heard and how beautiful she looked, which is pro- probably a bit of both to be honest. Like, oh, I wonder what she'll wear today, you know? Um, <laughs> I saw Tim Dillon uh, in Melbourne. We Rosie uh, and I went. Uh, Keelan, uh, Jazz, Luke, and Meg. Uh, we all went, and and your boyfriend Cam yes, was also boyfriend in attendance. Um, it was fucking great. It was so good. Um, I've been I've been a big fan of Tim since I I didn't know I, when I went to New York. I actually saw him perform. He wasn't small, but he was a lot. Obviously, he wasn't like the juggernaut that he is. I would say that I don't know. I, maybe he was around my size. When I saw him in in New York, and I he just did like a random club that I was at, and he was really funny. And then I looked him up, and I'm pretty sure it was when he was still his podcast was still like Tim Dillon Goes to Hell before he renamed it and rebranded it as the Tim Dillon Show, and then started to explode and rocket uh, to the comic that he is now. Um, and fuck, it was just so good to see good comedy again. I felt I feel like I haven't seen like real stand up, like gr- truly great comedy that like scares me for so long um one of the best shows that i that i had ever seen and it was like it was just like it was inspiring on like an ability level like fuck 
it, every time I see uh, someone like amazing, I go, man, you can get great at stand up. Like you can get so much better. Like this, th there is no skill ceiling with stand up. I think like there's a lot of there's a lot of things like um, you know, like athletic skills. There's like a there's only tiny improvements you can kind of like a few milliseconds here or there or a couple of kilos here or there but i feel like mm. with with stand up or with um uh or other similar things i guess maybe like art or illustrating or something like you can get like so infinitely good it just keeps going people keep pushing it further and whenever i see mm. that i'm like man so good so i really recommend that we got we got a bunch of tickets and uh I uh, actually messaged him asking if I could open for him, uh, but he told me that they had someone, which was which was fine. Um, I thought it was just cool to get a response at all. Um, and uh, yeah, man, it was at the Palais Theatre, which is like three thousand people. One of the I'd never been to the Palais, I don't think. Yeah, neither. Yeah, I've just seen the outside. Yeah, so yeah, beautiful though. It's so inside. nice. One of the yeah, definitely. I've been to a lot of theatres. Definitely my favourite. Um, but it's like three thousand people, and he he. Sold it out super early. Probably could have done it twice, mm. um, and it was just, it was just like so cool, like seeing someone kind of come up a completely different way. Uh, also, back it up with like really really great stand up ability, uh, and also sell a fuckload of tickets. Uh, it was cool. It was really really cool because you you <laughs> there's a lot of comedy in Australia that that uh, we're told to like, uh, and and people are like, I guess this is what comedy is, but then. Every now and then you see what it really is uh, and I felt like that night was it and it really made me go, man, I, I, I want to improve, I want to get better, I want to get to that level and uh, yeah, I just want to get over to America, dude. It's like it's where it is. Every time I see an American comedian come here and perform, I'm like, oh, you, you can't get you, – you can get good here. I think I'm very good. You, I don't think you can become a great in this country. Maybe in the UK, maybe – but it, I feel like America is where it is. I mean, talking to like a Australian comedian, Amos Gill, he's done Luke and Lewis uh, before. Uh, he's uh, Jim Jeffrey's opener when he comes to America. And I think he's living with Jim or he's definitely good friends with Jim. He might be living with him in LA at the moment. And um, <clears throat> uh, to give you an example of like my year, like let's say I'm not having surgeries. My year, the most I could perform would probably be like, you know, I could do Fridays and Saturdays for six months on a tour. Uh, and then when I'm not touring, I might do like three to four open mic nights, like five minute spots, seven minute spots in front of 15 people, six people, uh, or a hundred people. And I'll get 20 bucks. Uh, I'll do the comics lounge once, uh, in a month and I'll get 50 bucks, uh, in front of 400 people. That'll be amazing. Uh, and then, and then that's kind of it, you know, three times a week, five minute spots uh, when I'm not doing a tour, which is my own show for an hour, but that's only Fridays and Saturdays. Uh, we're talking to Amos Gill. He's like uh, just a comedian who's incredible. Like he's really, really great. Doesn't have much of an audience yet. He will, uh, but he doesn't have much of one yet in America, especially anyway. He's just like a, a guy who's good. Uh, and, but America has so many fucking clubs that need guys and girls who are good, that if you are good for an hour, you can just do gigs all year. And he was telling me that he does six show weekends every weekend where he goes out and he does, he does two shows on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, sorry, eight show weekends, six to eight. Uh, and it's like, and they're all hours in front of, in comedy clubs, in front of paying crowds who might not necessarily be there for you, but they are there for comedy. They've bought tickets to laugh at comedy. Um, and I just, I see that. I'm like, Oh, that's how you get incredible. Like eight hours of stage time every single week that's paid. And then when you're home, you could probably go out every night and do 10 minute spots, 20 minute spots. Reminds me of like when I ran around with Andrew Schultz in, in New York and I watched him do like six, 10 minute spots in like one night at a bunch of different comedy clubs jumping. You do one club, he would do 10 minutes, jump in a cab, go to another club, do 10 minutes, jump in a cab, go to a third club, do 10 minutes, jump in a cab, go back to the original club. It's their second show for the night, do 10 minutes and then go back to the other two clubs you've just been to. So three clubs, but six shows, six different crowds. And it's like, Oh, that's, and I watched him like take a bit 
that the first time he did it, it was funny, but it wasn't there yet. It was offending people and some bits were low, some bits were high. And then by the end of that night, it was like working almost perfectly. I'm like, oh, the wall, that for me is like, you know, a month or two of stage time in a night. And it's like, fuck, I feel like I'm really good. But if I was in an environment like that, I would just become incredible. And that's like kind of what seeing Tim Dillon like really confirmed for me. It's like, oh, that's, that's where it is. So I definitely got to be here because we have, we have one great thing, don't we, Rosie? Health care. Yes. yes. Health care. Yes. Right? That's very good, especially if you're me who has a fucked head. <laughs> <laughs> so I definitely have to be here for that. But, um, yeah, man, I, I think, like, that's, that's the goal. I've, 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 I, was, I feel like I was forced to forget it because of COVID, obviously, and I'm like, I'm not even going to think about that. But now that the world's opening up and uh, things are happening, I'm like, that's where I want to be. I want to be in New York. I want to be doing gigs. I want to be doing clubs. Because even if I'm doing fucking, you know, I hear, I heard um, <clears throat> this comedian complaining about the early stage of his career when he was good, but he didn't have an audience. And he's like, oh, man, it was horrible, you know, like every Thursday uh, and Friday, Saturday, I, I, I would fly out to some state I'd never heard of to go to some city with hardly anybody in it and I would do six shows and they would, they would pay me like $2,000 American for it and then I would come back and I would do that every single weekend. And I listened to that and I was like, that's like my dream. <laughs> like the guy's like, oh, this is awful. I had to do six hour long shows at comedy clubs for paying crowds who want to see comedy. And I, and I made $100,000 a year doing it. This sucks. <laughs> that's the bottom. In, once you get ability, obviously, if, you, if you're not very good, you, you know, you're not going to get much. But that's the, once you get good enough, that's the kind of the bottom. That's the worst part of it. And I listen to that and I go, that's so amazing. If I could go to fucking Illinois, <laughs> you know, and perform six shows in front of no one, who people who have no idea who the fuck I am, I would go, oh my God, I've made it. If there's never anything else after this, this is amazing. And you would get paid for it. And the minute he said, and I got paid, I was like, they're getting paid over there? What the fuck? <laughs> The only time I get paid is when uh, it's when I'm selling tickets to you. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I'm I'm excited. Uh, it just exci- it just really excited me, and the and the type of comedy he was doing was like shit. Where if you were trying to work it out or trying to write it like before it's funny, you just you just couldn't. You know, like the premises that he had, you'd go up in an open mic and in Melbourne, and people would go, "That's you can't even you can't even." pontificate that how could you even think such a thing let alone joke about it it's 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 really like oh yeah that's it's not here is not where it's at um as much as i love this place my my ideal my my ideal is like you know whenever it happens it's obviously not gonna happen for years and years and years because it's very expensive and you have to be at a certain level and i i need i need a head that functions uh but uh my my ideal is like what jim jeffries has done which is like blow up in the in the UK or in America like a, play, a place other than Australia and then once a year or once every two years you come home and you do a big mega tour and people are like he's fucking coming home let's go let's support our guy that's mm. that's uh I, I like the idea of that um but yeah anyway you got your passport Yes, Good. I do. This episode is sponsored by Manscaped.com. Uh, the best personal personal groomers in the game. Use code SPEARS for 20% off and free shipping. The Lawnmower 4.0, uh, really good stuff. They also have a, a bunch of uh, grooming products uh, for, for men and for ladies. They've got nose hair trimmers. Uh, they have uh, deodorant. they got spray. they got roll-on. They're just doing everything now. I wouldn't be surprised if they're doing makeup and Amber Heard comes out as like the face of it. Uh, Manscaped.com, use Use code SPEARS for 20% off and free shipping. Support the brands that support the show. Uh, they've been really, really good to me. They've been a partner for so fucking long now. Uh, so I really appreciate their support. And uh, they just make good stuff. I think they came up with a with a beard trimmer recently. So now you don't have to use the same thing for both, which I was doing. And I'm not ashamed because it's <laughs> that good. Um, uh, yeah, manscaped.com. Use code SPEARS uh, for 20% off and free shipping. It's just a bargain and it's just a good good product um i uh 
I took the dog this morning. Dude, I've been, this CPAP machine's like changed my life. I got up at 6.30 this morning and it wasn't to catch a flight. I got up because I felt like it. I haven't, I don't think I've woken up before 9.30 for like six months. You know? How many times have you come to work at 10 when you're supposed to and I roll into like 10.20 and I've just woken up and go, hi. Mm, I would say more than three times. I would say that's a really nice thing that you've, that you, a really nice <laughs> lie you've just told. It's way more than that. Um, yeah, so that's great. But I got up at 6.30. I'm like, oh, my God, what am I going to do with my day? It started, right? Uh, so I thought I'll take the dog to the to the dog park, which I'd never taken her that early in the morning on a weekday. She only ever gets to go on, on weekends in the afternoon. <laughs> I'm like, all right, I'll take you to the park. But I took her and, and I woke up at 6.30 and the dog was like, fuck are you doing dude like she even she was like oh, you going to the toilet i'll see you i'll see you in a minute you know she didn't get out of bed normally when i get out of bed she's like finally let's fucking go i need to wee let's do something i'm bored as fuck i've been lying here for two hours looking at the roof checking to see if the fan turns on because that's scary but uh, I got up at 6.30 and she looked at me and she didn't move. She's like, I'll see you back here in bed. And then I started putting on shoes and she's like, dude, what the fuck is going on? What are we doing? And then she got out of bed and I was like, do you want to go? And I said the words. I can't say it because she's there. She'll go nuts. And she's like, I, I kind of, I don't know if I'm ready for that, actually. You know, normally if I say that, she's like, yes, let's do it. I said it. She's like, uh, am I dreaming? <laughs> am I hallucinating? What's going on? This has never happened in my life. Um, but I got her out of the house and I took her to the dog park and uh, I, cause I'd never been in the morning on a weekday. I didn't realize that uh, lots of people do that in the morning with their dogs before work. Mm. Um, and so it was like packed. There were heaps of dogs uh, and she'd never seen that many dogs there before. Uh, and uh, you know, my dog, she's the most terrifying looking beast uh, in the room always. And yeah. she hangs out with me. Um, and uh, so I took her there and uh, all these dogs like ran up to her and I, well, I didn't realize that people go at the same time every day to things. I don't, that's not how I operate. So I'll, 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 I'll say, I'll say to myself and, and often to other people in my life, I'll be there at this time. And, but who knows if I will, you know, I might, mm -hmm. I might not. That's how I've been operating for the last four years is uh, yeah, yeah, I'll agree to a time, but will I be there? Um, so all these people, all their dogs know each other. So when, when Bobby got to the park, all eight dogs were like, let's go, new friend. They all run up to her and they all start testing her and, and like doing the alpha thing and like working out, which is all well and good if you have a little Jack Russell, <laughs> you know, if you've got a, like a golden Labrador or a, or a, or a regular Staffy. You know, when other dogs are like, kind of test your dog, you're like, oh, well, if they have a little, if they have a little fight, they'll sort it out and then they'll work out who's boss. Mm. Dude, the fucking anxiety when I saw like, uh, like a Shih Tzu, like having a real go at my dog was like, oh, great. So your dog is aggressive and, uh, and the council will kill mine. <laughs> yeah. If they have a, if they have a little disagreement you know, your dog is going to be in pieces. My dog will defend itself, and then and then I'll have to run away for for fear of the council coming and getting the the terrifying dog that they'll like reclassify as a pit bull because of what it did to your dog that you couldn't control. Because my dog's beautiful. She's she's quite well trained. She's not aggressive at all. I don't think she even knows that's an option. I've never seen her growl. She barks at things when she's scared, but it's usually the clothesline or mm. a tree, but I've never seen her react with aggression or anything. When she gets like freaked out, she's all avoidant. She's like, I want to get out of this situation. So mm. when all these dogs were like chasing her and she was running away, not in fear, just in like, ha cool guys, I need some space. Mm. And all these other dogs like chased her and were like, nah, nah, let's fucking, let's go. Dogs bigger than her, dogs smaller than her. I was like, oh my God, I was watching this going, this is going to, this is going to be the last walk I take with her. You know, I was just waiting for the snap. Didn't happen, which was great. But it's uh, mm -hmm. very frustrating when other people don't fucking control their dogs, especially little ones. I don't. It wasn't a Shih Tzu. It was like a small, fluffy grandma dog. Those things that are always covered in poo. You know, something them and Johnny Depp's bed have in common. Um, 
but this guy comes into the park with a small little fluffy dog, and uh, she it runs in and starts going, Ooh! like just screaming straight away, really excited, yeah. which is very cute. And then uh, uh, Bobby kind of was like walking around, and then the dog ran at Bobby and started like growling and biting and having it like trying to fight my dog, the American Staffy. And I'm looking at that going, oh, my God, what the fuck is... If my little dog did that to big dogs, I, it would not go to the park with me for yeah. its own safety. Yeah. I'd be like, no way. I don't want to watch this thing get mauled. Because <laughs> that's, well, that's what fucking happens. Is It's, it's like the, uh, you know, one dog starts it and another dog finishes it. Usually is how it goes. Mm. With uh, dog attacks, it's like kind of rare for a for a dog to just instigate out of nowhere for no reason. Well, well, I guess that's what the little dog did to mine. Yeah, that's happened to my dog before. Mm. My brother and I were walking Hercules, our golden retriever, up uh, when we were like, oh, we were quite young, like when we first got it. And then these just two dogs just came out of nowhere and started attacking him. Yeah. It's the most traumatising thing ever. Yeah. Yeah, very scary. And were they little dogs? Yeah, they were smaller than Hercules. Yeah. I'm not sure what they were. I want to say like like farm, like the farm dogs. Like the Kelpies or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think they were those. Yeah, and it's, all, it's, I don't know, it's like, it's very stressful. And then and then I go, mm. I go and grab my dog. I'm like, I'm not fucking, the guy's doing nothing, just like letting it happen. That's I'm like, how it always fucking. goes. I hate that. I know. It's like, dude. My, she will kill your dog and then and then you will try and, and kill my dog as revenge. That's how this fucking ends. So I go and grab the dog and then he's like, oh, he says about his dog, he goes, oh, this bloody dog's a, uh, aggressive. It should be muzzled as a joke, like laughing. Mm. And I was like, uh, yeah, dude, if, if, it, if it's going to do that at a park, you probably shouldn't bring it. Mm. And he's like, oh, uh, it's like, all right, dude. Yeah. It'll it, it'll be it'll be your urn sitting on the mantle. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't think I'm going to do that again in the morning. It fucking really stressed. She was fine. She was beautiful and like ran away and got out of situations she didn't want to be in. But it was mm. when the dogs were like chasing her and she ran to like the fence and then they like cornered her in the fence. I'm like, this yeah. is how it starts. Because you know, Bobby's so. already quite anxious as well. Yeah, she's a bit of an anxious girl, and we're taking her to training uh, to kind of get that out of her. But I just uh, I feel like uh, I don't want to deal with that. So uh, maybe I'll go to the gym in the morning instead. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and take her in the afternoon. Mm. Um, all right. So how long will we be going here? Uh, we should probably wrap up soon. I got to go. Uh, speaking of training, I need to go and train the dog. Um, thank you very much for listening. Uh, as I said, this is the last episode without braces. So. The next episode, look, I'm getting braces on Wednesday uh, and I'm not getting the surgery till May 27th. So I think I might, I might be okay for next Sunday, uh, which will be like what? Like f- almost uh, like 10 days uh, after I get braces. I should be fine. We'll see. Mm. I might do a short episode. I'll check in with you guys. Maybe I'll do, if I'm in pain or whatever, maybe I'll only do like... 10, 20 minutes, but I'll check in with you guys um, because I think I'll I'll absolutely have to take a break uh, after the surgery for two, maybe three weeks. I don't know. We'll see. But um, if uh, we might have a crack at pre-recording, I don't know. It depends on how well I can talk after my braces. Like today, we will finish like record pre-recording a bunch of videos for the braces and for the break of the surgery. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. So we've covered the whole break of the surgery. So if I can talk after I get my braces, maybe I'll also be able to pre-record the podcast. But I doubt they'll be an hour long, uh, unless you know you get me started on Amber Heard again. In which case, they might be three hours. (laughs) Um, So thanks for watching. Uh, I'll talk to you guys next Sunday. And there's a Patreon episode up right now uh, with the extended version of this. If you'd like to listen to that. So thank you. I'll talk to you guys next Sunday and I'll see you with braces. Have a shit one. Bye.